Hi, and welcome to Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving, a podcast series by Tharaka Foundation focused on youth mental health. Before we begin today's episode, I just wanted to let you all know that all content that is found in our podcast is created for informational purposes only. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or therapy. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition, and never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard in this podcast. Thank you so much, and without further ado, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving. It is your host, Poonam, here with a very special guest, Anjubala who is a licensed financial advisor. Today, we are going to talk about Money 101 for better financial security and better mental health. We all know that debt and financial problems can lead to poor mental health, such as chronic and long-lasting stress. And I believe many people feel that money stress is harder than work and family related stressors. So let us talk to Anju and learn some best practices to save and invest hard earned money for a better mental health. Welcome Anju, I'm looking forward to talking to you. Before I ask you a few questions, please introduce yourself and tell us more about you and what are you doing currently? Hi Poonam, Um, it is so wonderful to be here. Um, thank you so much for having me here. Actually, I would like to uh, first thank uh, Tharika Foundation for setting up this session, you know, which will help people to understand the concept and strategies of the financial market. So since I'm here uh, to provide some advice on financial industry or financial market, so I'm very thankful to uh, Tharika Foundation for setting this up. So um, uh, regarding myself, I do, uh, I am a financial service provider and I do retirement planning, how to attain tax-free retirement, 401k rollover plan, debt management, long-term care, life insurance with living benefits and college saving. So these are some of the topics that we will be talking about today, how we can save on this. I do provide these services and I help my clients to achieve their financial goals. This is fantastic, Anju. So what is your one piece of money advice you wish everyone would follow and why? Sure, yeah, Um, I know this is a a tough question, um, but it is a very good question at the same time because money is, I think, very important and sensitive topic that uh, we all deal in our life. So uh, the one piece of advice or money advice I wish everyone would follow is, you know, if they can live below their standard or mean. I mean, I'm not saying below their standard, like not means anything else beside money. Um, that basically means if, you know, if they can improve their financial well-being for, you know, um, because they can save on some of the money that they are using in their daily lives. Uh, that will definitely help everyone, you know, to, um, that would be my, actually, my advice to, uh, for everyone, how they can save on, uh, on the money side, on their financial, market, or maybe can the financial services side. So there are a few things we can talk about today. One is the financial security, uh, living below your means. That doesn't mean, you know, you are, uh, you build up an emergency fund. Um, but it, it does mean, yes, you build up the emergency fund, but, and it will create safety net for unexpected expenses, such as medical emergencies and job loss. This provides financial security and peace of mind during challenging time. So I think it's a very uh, important topic for the day today um, that how we can, you know, save on our uh, financial security. And the second thing. It's a saving and investment when you can live below your means. You have the opportunity to save and invest more money. Regular saving and smart investment can grow over time. So it will lead, it will be uh, lead to financial growth and financial uh, wealth accumulation. So definitely you will be, uh, you know, saving on your wealth as well as on your 
financial growth. And the third one is uh, the financial flexibility. Um, having extra money available gives you the freedom of, to pursue opportunities and take calculated risk. Uh, so, you know, whenever you are starting a business, uh, changing career, you're investing in education or personal development. So this it will give you financial flexibility with extra money. These are, yeah, yeah, I sorry. agree with you. So these are mm -hmm. wonderful advices. So, and we know the job market, we know future uncertainties. So I really like your advice. Like, you know, even though you have wealth, but save it for emergency fund, save it for, exactly. you know, rainy days and having that flexibility. If you're unhappy with your career, you want to change or you want to just start your business. If you do have those extra funds, it will definitely help you and reduce stress in your life. So exactly. I thank you so much for giving that advice. So what is other thing you would say most important thing to build wealth? One thing you shared, like, you know, we mm -hmm. shouldn't be spending lavishly, uh, try to, you know, live uh, under your means. But what is other important thing would you, you would suggest to build wealth? Definitely, there are a lot of other things that we can talk about. Yes, one other thing I would say, the and also most important thing to build wealth is consistently save and invest. So these are the two actions that, you know, are the key drivers, I would say, for accumulating wealth over time. So one is the saving. Um, saving money is a foundation of building wealth. Um, I think all, most of us know, but, you know, when it comes to saving, we, you know, sometimes we forget that, you know, um, that invo involving spending less than you earn and putting aside a portion of your income regularly is very important, right? So um, I, I would say start creating a budget and tracking your expenses can help identify areas where you can, you know, cut back and save more. So having those kind of discipline, I think it's very important to accumulate funds where, you know, you can save and invest for emergencies, especially. And um, investing also while saving is essential, you know, you can also, uh, saving won't yield substantial growth over the long term due to inflation. So we have to make sure that when we are saving, we are investing somewhere, right? And because investing enables your money to work for you for, by generating returns and compounding over time. So what that means, your money will build more money, right? Like we go to the bank, we deposit our money, they make money out of our money. So same way we can do the same. So when you are saving, invest somewhere so you can, you know, get compound interest. Yeah, that will, uh, you can also grow that money and then you can start investing on something else as well in the future. And the other thing is diversification. I think uh, whenever we talk about financial market, we always talk about diversifying our portfolio. So any, um, so this is something that you're investing portfolio across various assets. So sometimes we do invest in different strategies, maybe stock bonds or real estate, anything like that. So that will reduce risk and enhance in, you know, the potential for long-term growth. Meaning that, you know, um, so don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket, basket. So it has to be in different, different markets. So in order to invest and reduce risk. Um, and there are more things we can talk about, like long-term focus, you know, um, building wealth is not a get rich quick scheme, um, but it requires a long-term perspective. Yeah. Sometimes we are in rush. We say, how can I, you know, uh, you know, quickly get this money. It takes time. It does take time. So, and it does take long-term sometimes for many people or many successful investors, I would say and wealthy individual who have achieved their financial goals through patience and consistently saving and investing in these strategies. So yes, they have to have some patience in order to save and invest in, in the right, so they go into the right track. So yes, patience is key, uh, you know, key point here uh, for the long-term focus as well. So um, thank, you. Other thing, thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Sure. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, but you know, these are wonderful advices you're giving. 
Um, so definitely we talked about saving and you mentioned investment is important, whether it's a real estate or whatever your comfort zone and in stock market diversification. And I love that um, advice you gave, having patience, consistency. And I do believe that financial education is also very important. For personally, for me, you know, I'm not born and raised in this country. And I did not see my parents, how they saved or, you know, 401k retirement on stock. And I did not see them. I did not know all that. But I think having that financial education is very important, as you're saying. You know, there are a lot of possibilities all of us can look into when it comes to money. So I wanted to ask you another question. Uh, what's your best tip for fighting the impact of inflation? As we you know, know, inflation has gone up so much after covid and now also you know the economic situation the war in ukraine or whether it's like you know exports are getting stopped so any tips for fighting the impacts of inflation yeah absolutely i think uh, we are all going through this uh, scenario right now where you know inflation is on the peak and we have to deal with it no matter what so yes yes there is a advice for that as well. You know, the best tip for uh, fighting the impact of inflation is to invest in assets that historically outpace inflation. So we have to actually go back and see, you know, multiple years in the market, you know, what products or what investment that people were making and it did not affect their uh, portfolio. So that, that is one of the a key concept that everyone should be aware of. So what does that mean is that same amount of money will buy fewer goods and services in the future. So, you know, that, that would be your purchasing power of money over time. So by choosing an investment that tend to outperform inflation, you can help preserve and potentially grow your wealth. And there's one thing we have to remember that no investment is entirely risk-free, right? So we have to take risk sometimes in life. So same way the financial industry work, we have to take risk, but no investment is entirely risk free. So the past performance is not guarantee of future result. So we mostly look at the historical data whenever we invest because we don't have any future data. Future will come. So whatever, you know, we look at the historical data, so we will see, okay, in the future, it may happen. It may not happen, but that would be the prediction that we take, right? So this is something you would have to do so in you know if you are fighting against the inflation um you just do your research consider your risk tolerance and you know seek advice from financial professional before making any investment decision so that will you know help you to fight the impact of inflation for sure so but yeah make sure you are staying informed you know you protect your wealth against the impacts of in inflation so yes again you would have to uh, probably have to get advice from your uh, advisor, you know, whoever is your financial advisor, they can give you better advice on something you can invest in risk free portfolio. Thank you again, Anju. I, what I understood, yeah, education is very important. And if you are in the need, you don't understand, you know, all the trends of the past and prediction of the future, it's a good idea to get advice from professionals. Uh, so that you are better prepared for your future and having peace of mind. So I Absolutely. wanted to ask you one more question. Yeah. Sure. So what is the biggest mistake people make uh, when it comes to money and what should they do instead of making that mistake? Yeah, very good question. I think, like you said, you know, our parents, they didn't do this kind of uh, strategies or they didn't uh, have like invested in 401k and which is very true for most of us, you know, uh, who, who are, you know, uh, probably in the age where, you know, they haven't seen their parents saving it, but yes, this is the time we need to follow the, you know, the concept where we are not failing to create, uh, a follow a budget. So very important topic is a budget that yes, people 
have to understand how to create a budget. So, but budget is a very crucial financial tool that helps individuals track their income, expenses, and saving. Many people overlook the importance of budgeting, so which can lead to financial stress, overspending, and difficulty in achieving their financial goals. So, I, I think this is something. Um, if we realize this, how to you know make budget, how to understand budget, you know how much we can spend and save, then definitely we can you know teach our children uh, in the future as well. Thank you, Anju. So you brought up children. So I wanted to ask you any advice for our teenagers who are listening to our conversation. So you gave wonderful advices to our parents. Budgeting is very important. You know, how much is your inflow? How much you are spending? How much you have for emergency funds? So any advices for our teenagers? Absolutely. This is actually one of my favorite topic. The reason is I have Actually, I been through some a volunteer work, and where you know I have seen in high schools or you know early ages school, they they don't actually uh, cover some of the financial topics in school. So it's very important for our parents, you know, uh, to advise their teenager or teach them uh, how they can save on the financial side, right? So. So I would say again, start budgeting, learn how to create and follow a budget, track your income expenses and saving, um, save regularly. So uh, cultivate a habit to save money on a regular basis, um, small, even a small amount. So I can give you example. If we are having Starbucks every day, right? In 30 days, how much you're spending? $6 minimum or $7 minimum a day. Uh, if you cut into that, uh, like maybe instead of 30 days, you can have Starbucks for 15 days, how much money you will be saving, right? So, so that kind of consistent saving can accumulate over time and provide a financial future. Avoid that. So that means be cautious about credit cards and loans. So like teenagers, right? They don't know, they don't have much uh, education, how they can use credit card, how to build a credit card. So these are the things that they need to understand. They have to be educated on that, right? So make sure the, uh, avoid making any high interest debt, right? Or making or challenging to pay off any you know financial progress. Uh, they can challenge, but it, it's early education will you know help them understand how to avoid that. And the other thing I can also say, invest in knowledge. So invest in your education and personal development. So I think this is the topic that all our teenagers or high school students, they are aware of it because they do learn this in school, right? Uh, personal development. Uh, so they can also focus on learning and acquiring skills that can increase your earning uh, potential in the future. So explore part-time jobs. Many of, of our kids, they do. They do have part-time jobs and, uh, you know, beside going to school. So consider taking part-time jobs that will, you know, will give you extra money and gain your work experience as well. And you start saving. And this is the another advice I would say a teenager should, you know, I start looking into after, probably after age of 15, I think, with uh, their guardian, with their parents, uh, permission, they can start working on it. So, why impulse spending? So, think twice, you know, before making impulse purchases. So, practice mindful spending and uh, differentiate between needs and wants. So, this is another big topic. I mean, if I go over this, there will be so much to talk about needs and wants. We, we all have so many wants, but we want to, you know, spend more time on needs. So, practice that. Uh, opening account, bank account, that will also help you to, you know, you understand how you can uh, manage your money and uh, how you can learn, you know, doing online banking and tools, you can learn that as well. So there's more uh, things that you can also, like, ask for guidance, uh, like, don't hesitate to seek advice from your parents. Always, always ask your parents, teachers, or anyone who is your trusted adults, you know, regarding your their personal finance and money management. So uh, this is the age where they need to get advice in order to you know grow up with that kind of habit, so they can save money, and uh, and 
the other thing is be patient so building wealth and achieving financial stability takes time so be patient and stay committed to your financial goals um wonderful wonderful advices and you i love that you know award impulse spending so our teenagers uh, they they should know the value of money right so and you know sometimes the designer brand they are comparing like my friend is doing that why can't i do it but right. think, as you mentioned you know having that knowledge and you know letting them earn money by part time job so that they know the importance you know it's easy oh, to spend exactly. and to earn yeah very very wonderful advices thank you so much for spending time with me educating our audience it was wonderful talking to you yeah thank you so much um just remember so just to the listener of this mindful uh, podcast see financial responsibility and knowledge are very are invaluable skill right that will serve you well throughout your life so starting early staying informed you know and make conscious decision with your money this will definitely help you you know uh for your future with your financial goals and also it will also you know help your children to grow faster and understand the importance of money thank you so thank much you once again for... yeah, thank you you are listening to mindful beautiful and thriving a podcast series by Tharaka Foundation. As part of our youth series, we will be releasing new episodes every Friday, so make sure to continue to check those out. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you so much for listening.